Ready? Okay, you're going. Hi, this is uh, Matthew Suckey from Faith Award Baptist Church. You know, I'm making a video here about soul winning tips, some of the stuff I've learned from going out soul winning from back in West Virginia, and also some things I've learned since I've been in Arizona. And I just want to give you some tips that might help you out when you go soul winning. Uh, one tip I have is um, when you get somebody saved going soul winning, you know, ask them is there's somebody else in the house I can talk to? Maybe your sister, or your brother, or your dad, or your mom. Or uh, I mean, I've had a lot of examples where I got somebody saved. Ask, can I talk to your child? And the next person that you talk to is more likely to get saved because you've already talked to someone in their house, so they're more likely to listen to you. I've, I've noticed a lot of examples. I get somebody saved. I ask, hey, do you have a mom or dad I can talk to? And then I get them saved too. Because I mean, we're trying to knock every door at Faith Forward Baptist Church. Now, let's say you knock every door and there's always somebody home. You're still not talking to everybody because there's people in that house that you're not going to talk to. So I mean, if you ask, hey, is there someone else in my house in your house I can talk to? Then you know maybe you have an opportunity to get somebody saved that you know you, you're never going to get a chance to talk to. We want to talk to everyone we can. So I mean, it's worth you know asking you, know, is there someone else I can talk to? You know, a lot of times they're more likely to get saved than if you just go to the next door and knock someone. I see lots of people get saved that way. Um, another soul winning tip I have is to basically explain the basics. And what I mean by that is, you know, a lot of things we kind of take for granted that people understand about Jesus dying on the cross, being resurrected, and, you know, how the Trinity is true and how Jesus is perfect. You know, I did not believe Jesus was perfect. You know, I did not know that growing up. When I got saved, I was not aware that, that Jesus was perfect. And, you know, a lot of people are not aware, you know, that Jesus has been resurrected. You would be surprised how many people, you know, when you ask them, you know, have you heard what happened? three days after Jesus died, they do not know that Jesus has been resurrected. That's why we need to explain these things to them. Some people don't know what the word sin is. You say, how can someone not know what the word sin is? Everybody knows that. Well, you, you hear Joel Osteen on Larry King Live saying, you know, that, you know, I don't use the word sin. You know, I mean, that's why people don't know it, because, you know, people aren't talking about it. So we got to explain these things to them. You know, one of the things I do after I explain Romans 3.23 and 3.10, I say, you know, we've sinned. You know, we've fallen short, but, you know, the Bible says Jesus was perfect. It says, in him is no sin. So, I mean, I, I say something like that just to show how he is perfect. Because, I mean, a lot of people, they don't realize that. I didn't realize that before I was saved. And then if someone's not sure about Jesus being resurrected, you know, I ask them after I've gone through a lot, then I go to John 2, 19 through 22 and just explain that so they can see how Jesus was resurrected. A lot of people do not realize that. So, I mean, we take things for granted. We need, we need to make sure we take the time to explain things that they may not know that we kind of just take for granted that they do know. You know, another tip I have for soul winning is to quote the verse word for word in the King James perfectly. I mean, it kind of, it's a pet peeve of mine when I go soul winning with someone and they kind of just paraphrase something. If you're going to quote it, quote it right. I mean, they have to hear the word of God to be saved to begin with. It says being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God. So when we quote stuff, we need to make sure it's correct. Like word for word, I'll say, God was manifest in the flesh. Word for word, I show how God was came down in human flesh. It needs to be word for word correct. I mean, we quote something like John 3.16 or John 3.36, you know, not just make it like, say, he that believeth on the Son hath eternal life. You know, say it exactly like the Bible says. It has a lot more power. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. I mean, it's, it's the Word of God. The Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. So quote it exactly word for word correct. correctly. There's a lot more power behind it. If you're going to quote it, then, you know, let's try to make sure we quote it correctly. You know, another tip I have for soul winning is, you know, the Bible says a man that is inheriting after the first and second admonition reject. Basically, when you're going soul winning, it says that in Titus uh, 3.10, I believe. And when you're going soul winning, and you get into it, you shouldn't be getting in arguments when you're going soul winning. If someone doesn't want to listen, go and knock the next door. And you may say, well, yeah, that makes sense. It's an easy thing to do. It's not an easy thing. I mean, I think any soul warner gets tied into that sometimes because you, you want to get this person saved. You're thinking, man, if I explain it, they'll get it saved. But the thing is, you know, so many times you run into situations where you get in an argument with someone, and if you keep talking to them and arguing with them, there's people that you're not going to get saved that you can get saved later on that day. But we've all run into that over and over and over again. You can spend, some people are willing to argue with you for an hour and a half, but it's a waste of time. There's people a couple doors down, maybe the next door over, who's going to get saved right now if you talk to them. But that person that you're arguing with, they're not going to get saved. The Bible says a man that is an heretic after the first and second admonition reject. It's not always an easy thing to do, but it's something we have to do. Now, there's, it's also kind of on the line sometimes. If someone isn't quite sure about it, but they're listening, you might not want to just quit talking to them. But if someone is just saying, I don't believe that. I, I talked to a Jehovah's Witness a few days ago, and I showed them what the Bible says. I said, you know, the Bible shows that Jesus is God after I've gone through the gospel, and I thought he might get saved. 
And he said, yeah, that's what the Bible says. I was like, but you don't believe that, do you? He's like, no, I don't believe that. You know what? It is a waste of time to keep talking to him. A man that is inheriting after the first and second admonition reject. If you've shown it to him in the Bible, and they reject it, just go on to the next door. You know, the fifth tip I have on soul winning is, you know, a lot of times, you know, ask a parent if you can talk to their kids. You know, maybe the parent is busy, but maybe they'll let you talk to their kids, give them a Bible story or something. I know with Hispanic people, they're very open to letting you talk to their children. But, you know, a lot of kids are more open to getting saved than adults. I mean, they people go to this wordless book where you don't give them any Bible verses. You know, you don't have to water it down for kids. All you got to do is explain what sin is, explain what a gift is, and just go through it and, and just explain it just like you explain it to anybody else. They're more likely to get saved because they haven't... It talks about having the faith of a little child. I mean, they don't have all these false philosophies crammed into their heads. So we don't need to water it down for the kids, but, you know, ask the parents, you know, can I talk to your child? You know, just tell them a Bible story. Just give them the Bible story and obviously give them the gospel. You give them that Bible story. Make it kind of entertaining, but just go through those same verses, quote them word for word, and just explain it to the kid. Because, you know, there's a lot kids are very much more open to getting sick. And the, the sixth tip I have on soul winning is basically to stay dedicated till the very end. Because a lot of times you go soul winning and, you know, you go for hours, nobody gets saved. I, I remember one time I went for more than six hours in South Tempe, not a single person saved, not even a single conversation. And I was just, and I had to meet people at the church to go so many at 5.30, but I said, no, I want to keep going until I get somebody saved in this street. The last house, not a single conversation, I hit hundreds and hundreds of doors, the last house, on that corner, I got that person saved. I rushed back and got to the church just in time to meet everybody else. But I, I was dedicated to the very end. You know, God sometimes is looking for people who are willing to, you know, just do it. And then he's going to bless your effort. And then later on that night, I went to for an hour and a half and got six people saved in an hour and a half. Three separate conversations. And, I mean... If a lot of times that happens. Usually when I get soul winning and I get a lot of people saved, it's usually not the first couple hours I get people saved. It's usually at the very end. So, I mean, look, people say, well, the soul winning doesn't work. Well, if you go 59 minutes and 59 seconds every week, it probably doesn't work for you. You're going to very rarely see someone get saved. But if God sees you putting in the time, you know, the Holy Spirit is going to work, empower you, and God's going to bless you. You're going to get people to talk to if you spend the extra time. So spend the extra time. Those souls will get saved. Now, another tip I have on soul winning is... Um, to go in depth. You know, if you have someone who's willing to listen to you, most people don't want to listen to you. So if they're willing to listen to you, spend the extra time to make sure they understand that it's eternal life. Once saved, always saved. They, they have to believe that. To be saved. I mean, salvation comes down to what you believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. People think that, um, <coughs> People think that you can believe that you have to be baptized, be saved, that you can believe you can lose your salvation. I mean, what what do you have to believe in if, if you can believe that? I mean, it says, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave him his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us, eternal life, and his life is in his Son. We have to believe the record is eternal life in his Son. If we believe we can lose our salvation, that's not eternal life. We have to believe it's truly a gift. It says the gift of God is eternal life. If you believe it's mostly a gift, that Jesus paid most of it, but i got to be baptized to help cover the rest or not commit a bad sin like suicide, you're not believing it's a gift. So let's go in-depth. and You know, there's no point of praying with someone who doesn't believe. Sometimes people talk to people, and they say, well, you don't believe, can I pray with you? That's not going to get them saved. It comes down to what they believe. So, you know, make sure you spend the time to explain eternal security. <coughs> Usually I give examples with people and explain how, you know, even if you committed murder, and I ask them to make sure I see what's in their heart. I don't just tell them this is the truth. I ask them, well, what if you killed someone? Do you lose your salvation? And if they understand you, then I'll pray with them. But I, will, I make sure they believe it's eternal life. If they're willing to listen, spend the time, do it right. Treat it like it's like your, your brother that you're talking to, that you want to make sure he understands. Um, another example I have on soul winning is, um, <clears throat> kind of talked about this a little bit, but focusing on believe instead of the prayer. You know, it's not the prayer that saves you. It says, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him. And people take a couple verses in Romans and say salvation is a prayer. I mean, a lot of these people in these Howells Anderson churches, a lot of these different churches, it's all about the prayer. That if they don't believe, you know, just pray with them. You know, it's not about the prayer. Spend the time on explaining believing. Not about just getting to pray with them. I mean, just explain, you know, how it's believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Explain how it's eternal life. You don't have to do anything. It's a free gift. That's what we need to focus our time on. That's what, what God focuses time on the Bible. When people give him the gospel, 
Jesus talking to Nicodemus, how many times in there in John chapter 3 does it say, believe, believe, believe? That's what he focuses on, because it's about what you believe. And another tip I have on soul winning is, you know, basically, to, if you want to become a good soul winner, you need to memorize the verses. You know, it's good if, if you don't have them memorized, just show them through the Bible, Romans 3.23, Romans 3.10. You know, sometimes I go soul winning at night, though, and you can't even see the verses. And other times, people are focused on you. So, you know, you don't want to take it off that focus. So you just, I just kind of quote them the verses sometimes. I don't even show it to them in the Bible. Sometimes I'll quote, most of the time I don't quote, show most of the verses. I'll quote a lot of them. And then at the end on the highlighted uh, verses that are really big, like believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, say, well, let me show you this one. And then they're really focused to look at that one. But, I mean, it's important if you want to become a good soul winner to have them memorized. I mean, when I, I started getting people saved in Spanish, the big reason why I got people saved, you know, after a few months after I moved down to Arizona in Spanish was because I memorized those verses. I had them memorized within the first month or two I was down there. I memorized about 15 verses in Spanish. And, yeah, that's a large reason why I'm getting people saved in there. I mean, we need to memorize those verses. I mean, it's, they have to have the verses to be saved. And a lot of times you run into someone at the grocery store. You want to talk to them. If you don't have the verses memorized, how are you going to talk to them? It's important to have those verses memorized. And the last tip I have on here is basically to become all... Like Paul said, you know, I've become all things to all people that I might by all means save some. I might have misquoted that, but he says, to the Jews I became as a Jew, to the Greeks I became as a Greek. You know, we need to become as those people to get them saved. And what about, that doesn't mean going to the bar to give someone the gospel. What I'm saying is basically like, you know, I learned Spanish because if I'm going to get a Hispanic person saved, I need to learn Spanish. Some of them speak English, but you know, they're more likely to listen to you if you speak Spanish, if you talk to them in Spanish. So I became as them to win them. You know, and, um... Just like if you go to a group of people that's, you know, a large group of people, you know, you kind of need to take command of the situation, kind of be loud and just say, hey, let me talk to you about this. You go to church anywhere, not just talking to calm voice because they're not going to listen to you. You have to become as them to win them. You have to kind of survey the situation. You know, obviously, you're not going to scream at a little kid, but I mean, depending on the situation, you know, you have to kind of treat it differently. That takes a lot of practice. We need to become as them to win them. So, I mean, I just want to give some of my soul winning tips, some of the things I've learned about soul winning. Hopefully, you know, they'll be helpful to some people because some of these things, I didn't know when I first started going soul winning, and some some of the things I've learned from other people, some of the things I've learned from practice of soul winning. And so, you know, we're just filming this video. It's uh, four in the morning. You know, my friends are driving me up to uh, Pittsburgh as I'm uh, going back to Arizona. So, I just wanted to film this video. And, all right. Hi, this is Matthew Stuckey. Um, I wanted to add on to uh, my last video on soul winning tips, part uh, two. Soul winning tips number six through ten. I forgot a very important soul winning tip. That I wanted to mention that will help you get a lot of people saved. And um, this tip, the 11th tip on soul winning, is basically when you're going soul winning, look for people in the street to go and give the gospel to. Look for people outside to give the gospel to. Those people are a lot more likely to get saved for many reasons. One, a lot of times those are younger kids. And younger kids are much, much more likely to get saved. So look for younger kids that are out playing. Say, hey, can I stop and talk to you for a minute? Or just people standing outside. Or even if you see somebody across the street who's sitting outside, you know, Go over and talk to them first a lot of times rather than just keep going on your route and then go back to where you were. Because those people get, you, you meet them in a comfortable environment, so they're more likely to listen to you. They're, they're much more likely to get saved. A lot, a lot of times I go out and I'll knock doors for five hours, get one or two people saved, and then I'll get four people saved that are standing outside. It happens all the time. I mean, my buddy recently got 13 people saved in about four hours. And it's because he just saw a bunch of kids outside and he was talking to them. He said his new soul winning record and it's because he talked to a lot of people who were outside, you know. A lot of people just in a relaxed atmosphere, a lot of kids out there. So we need to look for those people. So if you're walking on one side of the street and someone starts walking by on the other side, you know, I'll cross over to the other side and go and talk to them. Because those people, it might, it might seem a little bit weird to just approach someone on the street like that, but I'm telling you, those people are, are more likely to get saved. I see those people get saved over and over again, and we got to forget about the embarrassment and realize this is a real person, a real soul, and they might not even live on that street. Maybe nobody's ever going to talk to them. Who knows where they live? And we need to take the opportunity to talk to those people that are outside you know, while we're going on a route door to door. That's a very important tip. A lot of people get saved that way. They're much more likely to get saved. So that's another thing to remember on soul winning.